So today I want to talk to you all about uh, the lessons that we've learned uh, from testing our new user experience flow on WordPress.com, also known as NUX, because it's easier to abbreviate things. Um, so I'm Mel Choice, I'm a product designer at Automatic, um, so I'm also a WordPress uh, guest committer. Uh, recently I've been working on the 2017 theme, which is uh, going to be released with WordPress 4.7 next week, so keep an eye out, super exciting. So over the course of the last year or so, uh, there have been a couple teams uh, focusing on the new user experience flow on WordPress.com. Uh, so we tend to see that as everything from like when you land on the WordPress.com landing page through sign up uh, and then up through the building of your website. Um, so my team, Gravity, has been working on the kind of the theme and setup parts of that. So to facilitate these improvements, we've run a number of A-B tests, uh, hoping to increase conversions and retention. And so I'm going to talk to you about some of those tests. Uh, so this could be helpful. I know there's a lot of hosts here um, for people who have, uh, like for managed hosts uh, who can set up their own Nux flows. And actually, if you are a host, I would uh, recommend doing that, uh, setting up a unique like, sign up flow to get people started uh, with WordPress. Uh, also, anyone who has a theme or a plugin or any sort of like software as a service, I would recommend looking at your, you know, your set of flow and seeing how it is. So often during user, uh, user testing of sign up, we'd hear people say when they get to the theme step, um, I just want a dog site. <laughs> can, this, can this theme make a dog site? Uh, but since theme screenshots are like really generic, you, you can't really like see and know what it does. But really, any theme can be used for any kind of site when it comes down to it, if you push it enough. Uh, so we thought, why not ask people what kind of site they want to make, uh, and then change the theme screenshot to use related imagery. So enter dynamic screenshots. Uh, dynamic screenshots props, uh, prompts people to enter a search term during the theme step of sign up. Uh, and then it switches out the images in the demo to help people um, visualize like what their site could look like. Um, so this is the first version that we A-B tested uh, and user tested. So you enter a keyword, uh, and the images inside the theme preview update to match what you're entering. So our hypothesis was that by allowing people to choose images uh, and like kind of personalize their theme early, uh, they'll feel more invested in the process. They'll understand, oh, like any theme here I can use for my site. Awesome. Uh, and then they'll be more likely to complete sign up, uh, and it would increase our overall sign up uh, conversions. Yeah, so it didn't work out. <laughs> So we actually realized really quickly that we'd run a buggy test. So we had to stop it early so we could fix all the bugs. Uh, we also user tested it and found some issues that were pretty bad. So there was like a noticeable flash of unstyled um, content when the user started typing. So it like looked really bad. Uh, the images were very slow. So it was just like a really unfortunate sluggy, sluggish experience. Uh, the search bar was easy to miss because the images were so visual that like you looked at the images and ignored the search bar. Uh, also, we were using the Flickr API to get CC0 photos, uh, and they, the ones that we were getting back just weren't very good. So we fixed the bugs. Uh, we made design and performance improvements, curated the images for some top keywords, and then we relaunched a new test, which looked a little bit better. Uh, but it still didn't do well, yeah. <laughs> so purchasing and sign up and retention post sign up both went down compared to the control. So you know, after looking at it, you know, we kind of figured out uh, it's just a hard concept to understand. Uh, people didn't really know what to enter into the search field. They'd enter like sentences, or like, there was, they just would put a lot of stuff. Uh, also, the search bar was still easier to miss even though it was larger. Uh, so it was also hard to implement well with the available uh, image APIs that we had. So when we did our initial testing, neither uh, Unsplash nor Pexels, uh, which are both like CC0 image repositories, they hadn't released an API yet. So it was just a resounding no. You know, we thought that maybe the idea was okay, but we could get better results by doing more curation. Um, so what did we learn from this test? First off, uh, people will write literally anything into an input. <laughs> so you might want to consider constraining it a little bit. Uh, also, curation is king. Uh, if you want to guarantee good image results, like you have to curate them yourself. Uh, also, make sure your tests aren't buggy. Uh, and if you user test before you do your A-B test, you can make improvements before you push it out live. Around the same time, we had another team at Automatic working on adding verticals to sign up. 
So when you sign up, you select a category of blog or site uh, you're trying to make, so like business, arts and entertainment, fitness, etc. So we tested two versions, uh, one that just asked about macro categories, and then a second one uh, which asked a second question about micro categories. So by gathering this data, we hope to learn more about our users and then use that to tailor things further on. Uh, so our goal was less about like increasing revenue or retention uh, and more making sure that we didn't decrease revenue or retention uh, while we gathered this information. Uh, and we did, yeah, it was great. We learned a lot about our users. Uh, it's been really helpful for planning additional uh, testing to our next flow. Uh, so we were also able to confirm some suspicions such as folks signing up for business sites or more likely to pay for upgrades. Uh, best yet, both of these tests actually increased our sign-up conversion. We were like, whoa, as long as they don't dip too bad, but like, they actually improved it. Uh, so the one-page one improved it a little bit, and then the two-page one actually improved it a little bit more. Uh, so we launched the two-page survey to our default flow, and then we've been iterating on it ever since. So recently, another team at Automatic has been trying uh, different layouts and vertical configurations. Uh, the user tested several different prototypes, which is a great idea, by the way, user testing your prototypes, uh, before settling on this design to A-B test. Uh, and it actually performed much better than the previous two-step version. Uh, so both the qualitative and the quantitative data pointed towards this version being just a total success. Uh, so it was launched into the default signup flow. So in a subsequent A-B test, we showed people who put themselves in the business vertical, um, business-oriented themes. So before we had just had like nine, nine top themes, and now we were like, here's our nine top business themes. Uh, so we saw a big increase in sign-up conversion, uh, and also in purchases during the first week of sign-up. Uh, but we also unfortunately saw a little bit of a decrease in retention during the first week after sign-up. So we weren't really positive why, but we had some guesses, uh, like maybe once they got through sign up, setting up a business site was actually really hard. <laughs> so we ran another test expanding this to every single vertical that we offered. So when you pick any vertical, you'll see t uh, themes that we think are more relevant to you. <sighs> yeah, so not very good. Uh, we saw a slight increase in sign up conversions, uh, but we still had that drop in retention. Um, it wasn't dramatically worse, but it just meant, maybe meant that we did a poor job of tailoring themes. Um, since it wasn't that great, we haven't launched it to our default flow, and we're going to continue to iterate on it and see if there's something better that we can do. So, you know, from these, from these tests, we learned that trying out one version wasn't enough. You really have to keep iterating on your ideas and continuously improve them. So, user testing your prototypes can be a great way to find the best version to then A-B test. Uh, we also didn't really get a lot of answers to why, like things have gone up, things have gone down, why? Um, so we need to find better ways of actually asking our users, like, why? Why didn't this work for you? So this year we also tested a new sign-up step uh, that asks users what kind of homepage they want. Uh, we called it Triforce, because there are three buckets, and where is all the nerds? Uh, so we identified the three most common homepage patterns in WordPress.com themes. So it's a traditional uh, blog with like a column of posts, a site with a static homepage, you, like business sites, uh, and then a homepage with a grid of uh, items like a portfolio or a magazine. So by filtering new users towards themes that we thought were more relevant to them uh, and having them think about the design of their site before they got to theme selection, we hope to increase sign-up conversion. So like kind of a continuation of the previous test. So, you know, there wasn't a significant improvement at first, but it was enough to tell us to keep doing this. Uh, so it also came with some additional data insights. Uh, we were surprised to see that roughly half of people who signed up were actually here to make a site rather than a blog. And uh, better yet, this feature is actually more impactful now after another thing that came up. So we really learned that all, test, all testing is valuable when we did this, uh, knowing just how many folks were signing up for sites, uh, which are much harder to set up for, in WordPress as a whole than blogs, actually helped us reprioritize another test we had coming up, which is Head Start, which is by far, by far the most important feature that we've launched this year. So it's a plugin that automatically sets up a WordPress.com site to look like the, the demo that you see, like in the theme screenshot. Uh, and so by... We, we found that uh, having people manually like, set up their sites to look like the demo is what people want the most and also the biggest pain point in customization for us, um, for both our users and our support folks have told us this time and time again. So you can see Head Start in action in this video. So I select a vertical, uh, and then a homepage layout, then a theme. 
Uh, then I go through some additional steps, signing up. Do, 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 do. Cool, and so I finally get to my site, and it's set up to match the demo I saw during theme selection like magic. So it's like, there you go, it's site. <laughs> So our hypothesis was that it's gonna be easier to edit something uh, than it is to create it from scratch. So by setting up your site for you, uh, including demo content, will increase your likelihood of sticking around. Yeah, so we, uh, it was awesome. <laughs> we saw a decent increase in the number of people who came back uh, at least once uh, in the first week after setup. Uh, I'm pretty sure we saw a decrease in happiness, like support uh, requests dealing with setup. Uh, so it was kind of a no-brainer for us. We were like, yeah, we, we, you know, we're launching this. <laughs> so we've since expanded it to cover um, almost all free themes, uh, and we're actually working on expanding it to cover premium themes as well. And when we combined Triforce with Head Start, we actually saw a huge increase in the number of people who came back at least once uh, in the first week after sign-up. So after launching it, uh, we kept getting a lot of requests from our support folks uh, to create a way for them to head start a site that had already been edited. So I guess a lot of people start their site, um, they edit it a little bit, they're like, oh my god, this is a disaster, I need to start from scratch, and they have no way of doing that now. So what they would do previously is make a new site, and that's just kind of a mess. Uh, so our happiness engineers were like, can you build us a tool to head start a site? And so we were like, sure, and we did. <laughs> so uh, it's been pretty good, and we're thinking of maybe expanding it to all users eventually next year, but maybe, I don't know. So yeah, we confirmed that editing is way easier than starting from scratch, and if you do the, the, the hard parts for people, they're gonna come back uh, and actually use their new sites. Uh, also, sometimes people get into building sites and they mess them up, and they wanna start from scratch, so it's good to provide people a way to like reset so some of you may actually already be familiar with this project because uh, it's launching in uh, 4.7 next week. So direct manipulation is the idea of being able to click something and then edit in place. So we wanted to test out a light version of this. So not completely direct manipulation, but kind of. So since not everything you see in the customizer preview is actually editable yet, we started by adding icons to the, icons, uh, to the, the items that you could edit. So when you click an icon, uh, it brings you into that section of the customizer and you can make edits. Uh, we launched our first version uh, with buttons that read edit, and then in our second iteration, we changed it to the button uh, icons that you see here. So we hope that by making it obvious what you, you, know, what you could edit, and then you know, bring you to where you could edit it, you'd be more likely to actually um, successfully customize your site, and then customizer saves would increase as a result. Yeah, so we found uh, quickly in user testing that people did find, use, and uh, like succeeded to great success. Uh, our A-B test data backed this up. So customizer saves almost doubled. Uh, it was a pretty clear success for us. Yeah, um, you know, we kind of knew people were clicking on things in the customizer trying to edit them, because that's kind of what you, you expect this day, is like to be able to do that. Uh, but now there's like actually a way for them to do that. Um, and it just, it's made customization way easier. I use it all the time now for site setup. Uh, and also, when it comes down to it, this wasn't a huge project. Uh, you know, it took us a couple weeks, and, and uh, that couple weeks that we built it, we almost doubled customizer saves. Uh, so combined with Head Start especially, it was a huge win. Uh, so when it comes down to it, this feature is a Band-Aid on the underlying issue of the lack of true direct manipulation and front-end editing in WordPress. Uh, and that's okay, because it's still an improvement, and it's a step in the right direction, and it's coming to core. So. That's great. So our last test uh, was a feature designed by um, fellow automatic designer Davide Casali that my team coded and tested. So in Trampoline, when you sign up for a new WordPress.com account and you make a site, uh, we tested out a new flow where you'd be dropped onto your homepage and then your admin menu would pop out and you'd, you'd be like, hey, click on this stuff. So by dropping users onto their site and then telling them where to go next, we hope to increase retention within a user's first week. Uh, and it did, you know, people definitely came back a lot more. It was actually one of the more successful tests that we ran. So we did a second iteration, pointing them to the customizer, like, hey, go customize your site. And people went to customize their site. Uh, and people who did that were more likely to come back after their first week. So we've experimented with a bunch of places to drop users in right after sign up, uh, their dashboard, their stats page, the reader on WordPress.com, uh, but it seems so far the most effective place is your site itself. But if you do that, you shouldn't just abandon them and be like, cool, here's your site, bye. You should tell them what to do next. So amongst all this testing, what did we see consistently? Well, like Sean Andrews says here, uh, straight up asking people what they want 
uh, helps us help them set up the sites they like and want to use. Uh, and then showing them how to make additional edits actually increases their likelihood of coming back. So I'd encourage anyone selling products in the WordPress space or services uh, to A-B test and user test everything you release. So there's a lot you can learn through testing to improve your onboarding and overall user experience. Thank you.